for your faithfulness. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your protection. Thank you for your provision. Thank you for the breath of life in our nostrils and this, your strength on our backs. We thank you for, Lord God Almighty, you have loved us with everlasting love. Oh, hallelujah. We worship, we adore you, we honor you. Glory, 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 glory be unto you. Glory be unto you. Glory be unto you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. 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 We worship and adore you. Bowing down before you. The songs of praise are singing. Hallelujah is ringing. We worship and adore you. Bowing down before you. Songs of praise are singing. Hallelujah is ringing. Hallelujah. 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 Ah, we worship and adore you, bowing down before you, song of praise. Is singing, Hallelujah! Is ringing. We worship and adore you, bowing down before you. Songs of praise is singing. Hallelujah is ringing. Hallelujah. 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 Nina Macuzali, Casale Tapoporina, Nina Mani Macushandaya. Hallelujah. We are gathered unto you this morning in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Go over to you, King of Kings and Lord of Lords, the Bishop of our souls, our Savior and Redeemer, the Savior of the world. We come in total surrenderedness as we surrender and commit all things into your care, bringing every other thing, powers and principalities, spiritual wickedness in heavenly or high places to the obedience Hello? of Jesus Christ, Is it on? the God of glory. The God of glory, we bless you. Yes, you are the only potentate unto whom nothing shall be impossible. For you ask the question, is there anything too difficult for me? Nothing is too difficult for you. You are faithful to accomplish and to do that which you have promised. 
you have power, divine power, above all other power. And this power you have delegated to us by your son, Jesus Christ, through the Holy Spirit, that we might walk in them and stand proxy for you as ambassadors and, and as viceroys to accomplish your good pleasure. O King of glory, take pleasure in us. Let that which you have bestowed upon us manifest truly to your pleasure, we ask. Thank you for the church of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for you have built your church and the gates of hell shall not prevail over your church. Thank you, Lord. Saduri makushanda ya kubakuri na makusinde. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you for this gathering, Lord. Thank you for your children who are gathered unto you on this forum, wherever they are right now. Father God Almighty, touch them by your divine power. Let it accomplish in them for joy, for blessings, for gladness of heart, unto thanksgiving unto you. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command everything that stands against this fellowship, this, this worship service this morning, to bow at the name of Jesus Christ. I dismiss them and I command them to flee. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we resist them, Lord, in the name of Jesus Christ. We uproot them. We cast them down. We break their foundations. We break their branches. Every root network that they have spread to strengthen themselves. We command the fire of God to destroy them. We command canker worms to eat them up. We command termites to destroy their foundations and their roots. In the mighty name of Jesus, they shall not prosper. They shall not profit. They shall not thrive. They shall not blossom. They shall not flower. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Lord has raised a standard against them concerning us. There is a clear dichotomy between the children of light and the children of darkness. The children of darkness shall wallow and roam and in confusion, they will not prosper. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we place a curse on them, a curse of blindness, a curse of confusion, a curse of brokenness, a curse of destruction to their foundation and to their branches. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the children of God, the children of light are empowered to be blessed, to thrive, to flower, to blossom, to increase, to prosper in the name of Jesus Christ. There shall be great harvest among the children of God in the mighty name of Jesus. And I use this spring church as a point of contact. Bloom, flourish, increase, be blessed. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, day spring church, you are called to be a light on the hill that cannot be hidden. Many shall see that light and approach it unto the Lord, to the glory of his name, in Jesus' name. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. And to all that are joining us through Facebook, Receive your blessing. Connect right now. Connect right now. That is a river that is flowing forth in the mighty name of Jesus. And that river is, is, is full, abounds with riches, with goodness, with blessings. 
reach out. Reach out and draw as you cast your net in that river. Pull and draw your blessings. Thank you, Father. Every resistance to the reception, to the taking, to the taking hold of the blessings of God, I break in the name of Jesus Christ. I command the degradation of such resistance, the pulling down and the destruction of every siege that the children of God have been struggling against up to now. For this is the day of the power of God that brings to naught all yokes of the enemy. I neutralize every power of opposition by the anointing of the Holy Spirit. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. By the anointing of the Holy Spirit. Satokum bakishate kase la bundu kuriali brata shemba. Tarila brandi kashantarma. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. And amen. Hallelujah. We bless the Lord. For this is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. And for those who are with us worshiping, as we are worshiping today, if you have an opportunity to share this right now on your Facebook handle, you can go ahead and share it so that your friends, wherever they are, will be notified that they could join uh, 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 us on Facebook, okay? It's going on on Facebook right now. You can go ahead and share it so that everyone who has the opportunity uh, will uh, alert friends and family that this service, worship service, is going on right now. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Welcome to this week. This is the week that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Today we just want to look briefly, as I say, every Sunday we want to bring the word of exhortation to exhort us as Christians and as believers to do the things that are expected of us. Amen. The day you give your life to Jesus Christ is an entrance into a different kingdom life. How you live in that kingdom is very, very important. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father. Today, I want to look briefly, just an, you know, exhortation to exhort us. I know many of us already know this, but some, from time to time, we need encouragement. And today, we are looking at the kingdom of power. The kingdom of power. And our memory verse is taken from 1 Corinthians 4.20. 1 Corinthians 4.20. The Bible says, For the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. The first day I read that scripture many years ago, over 30-something years ago, I was seriously challenged by it, that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. I was challenged because I was a bit confused. We know that we spread the kingdom, the gospel, with word. We preach. But here, the Bible is telling us that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. When the Lord says, go ye into all the world 
and preach the gospel, which is my word. And we also know that in the beginning, the, word, the, the Lord God said, let there be light by word. And in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, the Bible tells us that all things were made or created by the word. So when I saw this scripture, I said, what is going on here? The kingdom of God is not in word, but in power. That brings me to think over the years, meditating upon it, looking at it, being challenged by it. What does that mean? What does that mean? I come to the conclusion that the word is important. Very, very important. But the word is only a career, a vehicle, a channel that carries the power of God. The word is a channel, a container, a conveyor, a transporter of the power of God. The power of God is embedded in the world. The world is ineffective without the power. And the power of God and the power and, and, and the word of God come together to be God. Hallelujah. When you bring the power of the word of God and the power of God together, you are looking at God right there. And the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in word, but in power, a manifestation of that word. That is the power, the power that worketh in us, the power that can produce everything, the power that brings fulfillment and establishment and manifestation of the intent and desires of God the Father. For we have seen by scripture that God the Son is the word and the Holy Spirit is the manifestation, the channel by which the word is manifested unto us. When you have the Father, the Son and the Holy Ghost, you have the power of God present, the power that can do all things, the power that's, that, that goes forth and cannot come back unfulfilled. For there is power in the world that went forth to do that which it was spoken. It is not spoken in vain. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of power, established in and by power. Therefore, the people of that kingdom are a people that should exercise and walk in power. The kingdom of God is all about power, higher power, divine power, that whether you believe in Christ or not, you recognize that there is a higher power. Knowing that power, having the knowledge of that power is a different thing. You cannot know that power, truly know that power without a divine revelation that comes from that higher power to you. You can study and understand that power. No learning will teach you that power. It is a divine revelation and a divine impartation for you to have that power. And the Bible says, in John 17, that the knowledge of that power is eternal life. Hallelujah. The Bible says of the people in of, of the people in John 1, 12 and 13, but as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe on his name. 
which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. When you begin to acknowledge that power, that divine power, that is the kingdom of God, through the acceptance and belief in the name of the Son of God, the word. When you believe that word, a power shall be given unto you. <sighs> Father, help us here. You see, the Bible says here, but as many as receive him, receive him, the word. Remember, the Bible says that the kingdom of God is not in world, but in power. But went on to say that as many as receive him, which is the word for in the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word was God. If you receive him, amen, he said to them, give he power to become the sons of God. You have to believe what you have heard. You have to receive him. Not, take, not just take knowledge of him, but to accept and receive him then power will be channeled unto you. You see the combination of both. Power will be given to you. Amen? I will read that again. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. You have to believe on that name. You have to believe in that word. You have to receive it wholeheartedly, totality. It is only then that he who knows the heart of men will give to you power. What is power here? Power is that instrument by which you can accomplish your heart desire. You can accomplish your desire, your will, whatever you want to do. If you don't have power, you cannot do it. You can dance around power. You can wish everything and desire anything. But if you don't have power to accomplish what you have, what you want, you cannot do it. Many of us have said so many things that we want, but we have no power to do them, and those things remain unfulfilled till today. Why? Because of lack of power. The kingdom of God is the kingdom of power. It means it's a kingdom inhabited by those who have received divine power to move mountains, to make things happen. He said, you should command me concerning the works of my heart, and it shall be done unto you. And we are Christians. We are supposed to be the children of that kingdom, upon whom have been bestowed the power of God, the divine power here on earth to accomplish the pleasure and the will of he who has called us out of darkness unto his marvelous light. That we might show forth his praise. These things are in the interim. It is not the end. 
The Lord is coming back to take us to the end, the expected end, the final destiny, glory in him. But right now, we should be preoccupied by the manifestation of this power to accomplish the pleasure of he who has sent us. But when we look at the kingdom today, when I mean the kingdom, the so-called church of Jesus Christ, what is our preoccupation? What are we giving to? What do we do every day as children of the kingdom? Why are we having so much difficulties dictating the direction of the world today instead of trying to do catch up and all the time lamenting what the unbelievers are doing? It brings me to shame and embarrassment, to be frank with you. When I hear the complaint of the so-called Christians of what the enemy is doing, of what the unbelievers are doing, or what direction they are taking our children and taking our society and taking the world to. When the Lord said, I have sent you into their midst. I have put everything I created under your feet. The devil that is trying to do all those things are on, is under your feet and all his cohorts under your feet. You shall tread upon them, the scorpions and the serpents, no matter which way they manifest. And the Bible to make assurance doubly clear upon all the powers of the enemy. You shall trade upon them. And in doing that, don't be afraid of them because they will not be able to hurt you by any means. These are what we have received. Children of the kingdom with power, established in power, ordained in power, conferred upon us from above the divine God. We are a unique being on earth, but somehow most of us do not understand this. Amen. The Bible says he gives them power to become the sons of God. Which we are born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Do we understand this? The day that you believed in Christ, the day that you received him truly from your heart, you are saved. And you are sealed with the Holy Ghost of promise so that you cannot revert to sinfulness. You cannot continue in sin. Because the day you do that, the Bible said, now you are in Christ. Your old form of weakness and sinfulness and humanity is passed away. You have become a new creature. And all things have become new. That is when you are born of God. It is not a makeover. It is not when you go and make over and get a new dress and have a new uh, a tie or a new suit or a new gown uh, and do your hair and uh, 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 do spring cleaning for your home or 
go to a car wash to clean up the, some of this mess that's around you. No, it's not a makeover whatsoever. The Bible says that you have been transformed. The old man is dead. You are a new creation. All things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You have been introduced into a new kingdom. Move from the old kingdom. You have now been removed from the kingdom that is fraught with weakness and faults to a perfect kingdom where there is no fault, there is no weakness, but of power. The power of God. That is who you are supposed to be when you are truly born again, when you are transformed from the kingdom of the world into the kingdom of God, the kingdom of power, which is established by power, that is run by power, that manifests the power of God to accomplish the desire and the will of God. And you are the agency by this, by this, will be established or is operated here on earth. You and I, so-called believers. Hallelujah. Because the seed of God is in you. And God is powerful. His seed is powerful. The example of his seed is our Lord Jesus Christ that came. And what he is or was in the flesh, he has transferred to us that as he is, so are we. If you are a true believer. That was why he said, I give you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and all the power of the enemy. He said you have power to cast out unclean spirits. He said you have power to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. There are so many things that we have power over. But today we are in lamentation. We gather ourselves together to do everything else except walk in that power. This calls for a serious examination. No wonder the Bible says in the book of Acts that all creation is awaiting the manifestation of the sons of God. All creation in despair awaiting our manifestation the people who have power to make changes, to decree a thing, to establish the kingdom of God and to establish the desire of God upon this earth. We think it's that only humans that are feeling the decay, the degradation of the earth and our existence. No, every created thing has suffered. And the only hope they have is in you and I the sons of God. The Bible says, because the seed of God is in us, that is why we should walk in power. For the seed of power is in us. The children of the kingdom shall walk in the power of God that walketh in them. If you are born again, if you have the Holy Spirit, the seed of God is in you because you are born in the spirit and the image of God. Therefore, the power of that God is working in you. Amen? Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that walketh in us. 
You see the power that God has given to you by the Holy Spirit who comes to live in you. After our Lord Jesus Christ said, it is expedient for you that I go to the Father. And if I go to the Father, I will send you the promise of the Father, even the Holy Ghost. It is expedient. It is fitting. It is proper. It is the right thing to do. So that when he comes to live in you, the conveyor, the transporter, the carrier of the power of God on planet Earth is living in you, who is the seed of God. You will be able to manifest the power of the kingdom for the kingdom of power you are now part of. Why the church of Jesus Christ, the so-called church of Jesus Christ, is not dwelling on this every day. It's shocking to me. You can see all kinds of manner of things out there. You say, pray this prayer three times every morning and this will happen to you. Say these words seven times before you go to bed and this will happen to you. Do this and do that and do that. You will receive this, you will receive this. Somebody will write something and say, say amen three times and God will do this. You have done that so many times. What happens? What were the results of this? These are diversions. These are the enemy making people to focus on the things that do not deliver into the kingdom of God. They are distractions. And the enemy is very good at distractions. The enemy understands the mystery of the body, the soul, and the spirit. And he is out to subvert that trinity. Because the enemy is not a trinity. God is trinity, Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. A soul is trinity, body, soul, and spirit. That's where trinity ends. Animals are not trinity. Angels are not trinity. Satan are not trinity. It's not trinity. Demons are not trinity. That is why you are able to resist them by the threefold cords that cannot be broken. It's about that we begin to understand the mystery of the kingdom and operate at the platform of power that God has already given unto us. We should stop running around. In emotional whatever. And make people engage in religious activities that does not produce the desire of God unto Jesus Christ. We should examine ourselves. What are our desires? What do we really want? Are we actually doing the will of him who has sent us? He says, seek ye first the kingdom of God. That is, enter into this place where you are in the kingdom and have this divine power working in you first. Then all the other things that we worry about and run around, 
after will be added or given unto us. Our preoccupation will be how do we enter into this kingdom and know that indeed we are in the kingdom. What are the signs of this kingdom to reassure us beyond any deception that people might have out there, Satan might have out there, that we are in the kingdom. Not because someone tells us you are in the kingdom, not because I think I am in the kingdom, but truly be in realization of this knowledge of the father that brings power, the Bible says, that I am in this kingdom. I am an heir of this kingdom. I have access to the power of this kingdom. I am empowered by the fact that I'm in this kingdom and I'm able to occupy my prepared place that I might, that I may exhibit and employ and manifest the power that comes from being in that kingdom, occupying my place, rightful place in that kingdom, to accomplish the will of him who sent me, so that at the end of the day, he will take me to the expected end. That is what we should be looking at. There are so many parts of this message that one cannot give in this short time. To examine and expose these things. Brethren, do not be deceived by things that appear to be real, but are really not. You examine your life by the scripture, the light of the scriptures. For the Bible says that the entrance of the world brings light and makes the simple wise. Don't be a simple thing. God has given you literacy, education. Thank God the Bible is written in so many languages that whatever language you have today, you can access the scriptures and know the truth. And the Bible says you shall know the truth and the truth will set you free. What are you pursuing? What are your pursuits? What are your desires? Is it unto the one who called you, who saved you, if you are saved? Because not all that came to Christ are saved. The Bible shows us many who have come to Christ because they believe. You have to define the world and believe. Are you following me? Define that word and understand when the Bible says believe, who has believed? Amen? Who truly believes? Because it's the ones that believe in their heart and confess with their mouth that are saved. You may confess with your mouth and not believe. You may believe and not receive to acceptance and confess with your mouth. Two of them must be fulfilled for God to honor it. And when God honors that, he gives his Holy Spirit. That is how you know that you're saved, by the Holy Spirit. Remember what I said? By the Holy Spirit, by the Holy Ghost. The operation of the Holy Ghost in your life is a way of knowing that you believe that you are saved. And the operation of the Holy Spirit is by power. We see in the Bible, in the Act of, in the Act of Apostles chapter 8, when Philip went and preached, and the people received the Lord. No, and the people received him, his word. And the Bible said they believed. Many believed. But it turned out that even though they believed, they have not received the Holy Spirit. What does that mean? 
they are not saved yet. Salvation will come after you have believed. You receive and you confess with your mouth that which you have believed, that you have received in your heart. The Bible says in Ephesians 1, 13, that you are sealed with the Holy Spirit. That is God's acknowledgement that I have seen your heart, that if in truth you have believed and you have received, and he will do that which he promised in John 1, 12 and 13. That as many as believe, he gives them power to become sons of God. What is that power? The presence, the outpouring, the infilling, and the power of the Holy Ghost. And the Bible says in First John chapter 1, that it is not all spirit that is the spirit of God. So there are spirits out there mimicking the Holy Spirit. But really not the spirit of God. That's why you have to be very careful. The spirit that you have that may speak in tongues. What else do you do beyond speaking in tongues? What power do you manifest to the glory of Jesus Christ, to the praise of Jesus Christ, to the building and establishing of the kingdom? Have you ever been confronted with the power of the enemy and by the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you, you overcome? These are the tests of your true belief, whether you are living in the kingdom of power, which is the kingdom of God, or you think you are living and the enemy is deceiving you. If we have all this power, how come the enemy is succeeding in so many places? In the first generation Christians, believers, you see how a few people turned the whole world upside down because they were making converts. They were manifesting the power that worketh in them. They are true heirs of the kingdom. The Holy Spirit is in them. The angels are working on their behalf to accomplish they are decrees. When they decree a thing, it is established unto them. Have we received the same spirit that brings power? Do we have that same spirit that manifested power in them and they confounded everyone? Unknown quantities in the Middle East, in Israel, and Palestine, went to see Caesar in Rome. How could that be possible? Have you ever thought about it? Villagers and fishermen, tent maker, because of the power that works in them, they became so influential and so powerful that nothing can repress them. Even in tribulation, they were feared and respected. Because they are ensigns of God, apostles sent forth by God, a villager, a fisherman, a tent maker went to see the most powerful person, even sometimes called himself God, from where they were in their village to Rome, the capital of the world, 
the seat of power in those days. Principalities and power manifested from those places and they went and they were in front of that power. The Lord may not have called you to go and visit presidents. But when you begin to manifest the power that worketh in you where you are, you will appear before mighty men and mighty women, the influential of this world, not lamenting, biting your fingers, complaining of what the enemy is doing here, what the enemy is doing there, blah, blah, blah. When you have power in your mouth, the power of life and death, the power in your hand, that whatever you lay your hands on, whatever you speak and command, there will be changes. Do you have that power? How many of us who profess Christianity have that power? That power is irrepressible. If you have it, it will show. I'm concerned about this because there are great gatherings and meetings all over the world every day. At the end of it, does it produce the power of God as manifested in the kingdom, doing the will of God? If you look at the first generation Christians, when the Holy Ghost came upon them, the Bible says, you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. And these signs will follow you. You will be witnesses to me because of who is in you. When the Holy Ghost arrives, that confirms that you are a seed of God, a child of God, a son of God, a true believer, this is what is going to happen to you. You become witnesses for me. And the Bible showed us that when the Holy Ghost came upon the brethren, the true believers, the people who truly believe, because it didn't come upon everyone who claims to have believed. When the Holy Ghost came upon them, great persecution rose against them. The devil came with persecution, mobilized people. And they came against the believers who have the power of God by the Holy Spirit. And the Bible said they fled. They scattered from Jerusalem to all the places. But then the Bible says something. That as they scattered, they were preaching the word. They scattered with the word that brought a great spread of the world, a great outbreak of evangelism by the power of God. And everywhere they went, when people believed, when there were manifestations of the devil, they cast out the devil. They healed the disease. The leper, the blind, some of them raised the dead. Manifesting the power of God that is in them. Do we have the same spirit working in us? That is my challenge to me. I know I have had some encounters, but that is not enough. When I attend a meeting, what is my expectation? Does that help manifest the presence of the Holy Spirit in my life to do the things that have been sent to do? Every day I go out, my prayer is, Lord, expose me to an environment and condition where 
I will be able to say, I showed forth the praise of he who has sent me. And I have some encounters, but I'm still not satisfied because we have billions of people in the world. How many people do I touch every day for Jesus? What is the proof of the Holy Spirit in my life? If I'm still at that stage where I'm saying, hey, Lord, bless me with this. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. I have become a stunted child. Or maybe I was never really a child of God because if his seed is in me, his power will be in me. And if his power is in me, I will manifest that power to the glory of his name, to the advancement of the kingdom, and to the blessedness of my whole person. Let me close. That's a power that worketh in every believer. The power of the Holy Ghost that confirms on you sonship. And you will walk, if you have that seed of God in you, you will walk with the power that comes with that position. For the Bible says you are heirs of God and joint heirs with Jesus Christ. It says when the Holy Ghost comes upon you, the works that I do, you will do also even greater works that you will do. Why these things are not daily challenges to us and we are seeking other things amazes me. Amen. Ephesians 3.20 says, Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all the all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh in us. According to the power that worketh in us, if that power is in you. The main sign of the sonship of the believer is the presence of the divine power by the Holy Ghost the Bible says, ye shall receive power when the Holy Ghost is come upon you. A true divine encounter with Jesus Christ will result in a life-changing outcome that is sealed with the giving of the Holy Ghost that provides the power of the new life of the kingdom. Without the presence of the Holy Ghost, you cannot live that life. He is the one that brings power for the living of the new life. When Mary, the mother of Jesus, had an encounter with the angel of the Lord, in Luke 1, 35, the angel said, and the angel, the Bible said, and the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the most, of the highest shall overshadow thee. And an encounter with Jesus an encounter with the angel of the Lord, an encounter with God, will be approved, authenticated by the giving of the Holy Ghost. And the angel answered and said unto her, the Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. That is what happens to you and I when we have a true encounter with the spirit of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy Ghost will come upon us. The Bible went on to declare in Acts 10.38 how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with what? Power. Approval of God brings the Holy Ghost. And Holy Ghost comes with power. Amen. Say, so who went about doing good and healing all that we are oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. How do you know that God is with you? You have the Holy Spirit. How do you know that you have the Holy Spirit? 
will walk in power. How do you know that it's an authentic power from the law, not demonic power? You will go about doing good, healing all those who are oppressed with the devil. Why? Because God is with you. That's why you have the Holy Spirit to prove the presence of God in you. And that presence is manifested in power. And that power is demonstrated in doing good, salvation of people, healing, deliverance, making a difference in people's lives. That is the work of the Holy Spirit. That is the job, the assignment of the church. Ah, God help us. The divine presence of God in anyone who claims to be a true believer is signified by the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit and the accompanying power. The grace to execute an assignment, to bring a desire to pass. Power. There is a religious spirit out there that mimics the Holy Ghost, but does not empower many to walk in the power as the Holy Spirit does when he is present. The Bible says in 2 Timothy 1, 7, for God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. In 2 Timothy 3, 5, the Bible tells us that these are the people who have this religious spirit that mimics the Holy Spirit, but not the authentic Holy Spirit, are having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. He says, from such, turn away. I have nothing to do with them. If our faith is real, if we are truly sons of God, the seed of God in us, confirmed by God himself, by the giving of the Holy Spirit, we will have power. We will walk with power. We will walk in power. We shall be established in power. And every day we share manifestation of the praise of Jesus Christ who gave all to purchase us back to the Father. Not seeking side issues. Why should Christians be depressed? when they have more important things to focus on? Why, do, why are Christians sitting as victims when they have all the power and everything backing them up? Why are we not exercised? Why is it that those who speak titillating and some words to us make us pursue them? The Bible says in the book of Isaiah that those things will happen. They speak words that have sound so beautiful, but do not empower us to be free, to be the children of God that we are called to be, to exercise and dominate and, and or exercise authority and dominate and rule with God in the place that have been assigned to us. What is going on with? What's going on with us? Let me end it here. A sure and true encounter exposes us to the divine power of God. And 2 Peter 1 3 says, According as his divine power had given unto us all things that pertain unto life and godliness, through the knowledge of him that called us to glory and virtue. According as his divine power had given unto us all things without exception that pertain unto life in this world and godliness, spirituality, through the knowledge of him, through the knowledge of Christ, through the knowledge of God, that has called us to glory and virtue. Let us examine our life. 
to see if we are indeed walking in the knowledge and power of Christ by the Holy Ghost. What we claim is not necessarily who we are. The Bible is full of signs, pointers, to show us whether we are standing in truth. Or have we been deceived and we are pursuing vanity? It is personal. Nobody will go with you into your prepared place. You cannot be saved with anybody. On the day of judgment, you will stand alone to give account of your activities. What shall the Lord say concerning you? Welcome. You come into my peace, my faithful servant. What shall you be depart from me? You worker of iniquity, I know you not. Have you denied the Lord in pursuing things that has no pleasure to him? Or have you stood in defense and praise of his name? Remember what he says, you have not chosen me, but I have chosen you and ordained you to go and bring forth fruit. What fruit have you brought to the Lord in the last six months? Are you thinking about it? That a day shall come when you will give account and stand before the King of glory his majesty on high to give account of your stewardship. I'm not asking you to go and save the whole world. The Lord has not asked you to do that. When he said go into all the world, he's talking about all his children in all the world. It's not a taskmaster that he will give you things that you cannot do and then hold you responsible for failing. No, that is why he prepared a place for you. Know yourself and the power that worketh in you. Be established in the calling of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. So that his divine power we give unto you things that pertain, all things that pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of God. They that know their God shall be strong. They will have power and they will do exploits. Are you doing exploits? What are the areas of the exploits? What are those exploits? If it's being able to pay your rent, unbelievers pay their rent every day. Those worldly things are not the measure of the exploit you do. Personal things. Exploits are the things that you do on behalf of he who has called you out of darkness into his own marvelous life that you will reign with him in glory. Those are exploits. And it takes power for the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent man takes it by force. You cannot have force without power. And God has given you that power. Violently. Take it. Forge it out of fire. To the glory of his name. Because he's backing you up. Both in your action and in your word. What is the proof. That you belong. In that kingdom. Let us pray. For the kingdom we talk about is the kingdom of power. For the God of that kingdom is the God of power. And when you are the son of that kingdom, the seed of the God of that kingdom is in you. Therefore, you have power and you must exercise, walk and be established in power. 
because you have made prince, you have made kings, and you have made priests of God. You will decree a thing and it shall be established by power. Where have you tried to use this power? And if you have spoken in a manner that will convey that power and nothing is happening, examine yourself again. Are you speaking with that power? Do you have that power? Pray right now. You know yourself. Ask God. Who sees the heart of man? To examine your heart. Have you believed properly? Do you have the knowledge of the divine? Are you truly saved? The spirit that you have is, is that spirit, the Holy Spirit. Pray to God right now, sincerely from your heart. This word is not to condemn anyone. I am talking to myself as well. I am not satisfied yet. That is why one of my daily prayers is that, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection. I am not interested in running from pillar to post, running from one meeting to the other. I want to be confronted, sat down, confronted by the Holy Spirit, who only can give me a true knowledge of God, which is established in power and salvation and eternal life. Talk to him. Ask God to give you that power. Ask God to help you and establish you in that power. As you are praying this prayer, please bring your bread and your wine. It was concluded in agreement because when we come to the table of Jesus Christ, we are coming in unity and oneness. And the Lord is saying to us, whatsoever ye shall agree, touching in prayer, when you come together, it shall be given unto you. Will you ask for that divine power today, that you might walk in the kingdom of power, in power, established in power, ruling with God in power, in occupation of your divine place prepared for you. We shall live triumphantly. We shall do exploit because you have power. And you are manifested the signs of the kingdom of power to win the kingdom of God. Take your bread, break it in the name of the Father, and eat it. Hallelujah. The thanksgiving. As God to manifest power, Holy Spirit manifesting the kingdom of God in your life in small and great places of life in your life. That you might walk triumphantly in victory as an overcomer. You will no longer be a victim of the enemy oppressing you because of ignorance. The enemy operates in ignorance only. If you know the truth, you shall set you free. The Lord himself said so. Let us prepare our hearts to walk in victory. In sonship. Let no one deceive you. Hallelujah. There is a power that works in you. To the power of God. In the life of all true believers. Who have inherited sonship. Who are no longer in the flesh but in the spirit. 
who reign with Jesus Christ? Who represent him here on earth? By their actions and their words, the kingdom shall be established until Jesus comes. Will you be one of them? Pray to be one of them. As we take this together as the body of Christ, in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, let's take it. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. If you are following this worship service on Facebook and you have not given your life to Jesus Christ, this is the time to surrender all to him that you might be admitted into that kingdom, the kingdom of light, the kingdom of love, the kingdom of life, the kingdom of power, the kingdom of our Lord Jesus Christ. Receive him. Confess your sins to him. That you are sorry for those sins committed in the time of ignorance. Today, by the working of the Holy Spirit, there is a light being shown upon your soul. The, no the light of the knowledge of the divine. That is eternal life. Receive that knowledge right now. Receive forgiveness of your sin by the blood of Jesus Christ. Be established in the kingdom. Hallelujah. Pray that your name be written in the book of life. And the Holy Spirit be sent into your heart forever. In the mighty name of Jesus. If you have prayed that prayer and asked the Lord to do this, you may want to contact us. We will help you along the way. As we fellowship together, ask and answer questions together in fellowship by the guidance and the leading of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Father, for today's message, the kingdom of power. Thank you for establishing us and calling us into it in power. We receive this day the anointing to operate in power. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. God bless you. As you walk in power, as you embrace the power of God, as you are established in power, as you reign on behalf of God in power, as all your enemies come under your feet because you exercise power and authority over them. For so this is your inheritance. This is your heritage. This is what God has called you to. Reign in his confidence. Ruling over principalities and power and all the spiritual wickedness that may want to interfere and operate in your prepared place. Bring them all to the obedience of Christ. In Jesus' name, as you reign in dominion over them. Amen. And amen. God bless you. God bless you. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Father.